Hi everyone, Frank Game here. So today I'm going to be showing you the Northern Lights in a bottle. It's essentially it's just a whoosh bottle with a boron based gas in it. Turn it green and slow down the combustion a bit so you can watch a green flame travel down the bottle. So if you watched my uh, previous video before I changed it, um, it did include this experiment, but my uh, friends, family, and teachers seemed to really like this one, so I decided to break it off into a separate video, get some better footage, and explain it in a bit more detail. So let's get started. Alright, so if you haven't watched my pre previous video, the uh, whoosh bottle, um, essentially all you do is you fill a bottle with oxygen and a flammable gas, and when you drop a match in, um, that flammable gas burns in the surrounding oxygen and pressurizes the bottle, throwing a flame out of the top and creating a whooshing sound. So the Northern Lights in a Bottle experiment works the same way, except I'm going to be using a boron-based gas. So the substance I'm going to be using for this is called trimethyl borate. So trimethyl, here's the chemical formula for trimethyl borate. It's a uh, boron-based liquid, but like any liquid, if you agitate it, shake it around in the bottle, it'll, it'll evaporate some. So it's very, very simple and easy to make with uh, hardware store-bought chemicals. All you need is methanol, which is often sold as heat antifreeze, and boric acid. The methanol provides a CH3 ion and the boric acid provides the BO3 ion. And when you mix the two, they join together to create water and trimethyl borate. So, theoretically, if both my chemicals were completely pure, um, then I would need 0.51 grams of boric acid per milliliter of methanol. But since this is hardware store-bought, um, these are hardware store-bought chemicals, um, and the reaction occurs in equilibrium. I'll not, I won't actually need that much boric acid for a complete reaction. So, all we need to do here is, I'm going to get the methanol. Alright, so here I've got about 50 milliliters of methanol. So I'm going to add boric acid until no more boric acid will dissolve and react and we start seeing solid on the bottom. Stir that a bit. Add a little more. Now if you want this reaction to proceed to completion, then you can add sulfuric acid to remove the water. But that's not necessary in this case, as I found that this reaction produces more than enough um, a trimethyl borate to evaporate and cause a combustion reaction in the bottle. Let me check the bottom. Yep, I'm starting to see solid on the bottom. So now the trimethyl borate solution is ready. Let's go out back. Okay, so here I am on my uh, back deck. The uh, combustion reaction isn't terribly violent, so you can, I would recommend doing this outside, but it's safe enough that you don't have to go out and test it back there where I usually test the pyrotechnics. I'm going to add all 50 milliliters to the bottle here. And all that's left to do is shake it around, maybe blow into the top a few times to get some oxygen in there. So I'm doing right now by um, agitating the liquid here is getting it to evaporate so that it'll mix with the surrounding oxygen. And then the flame will, uh, will travel down the bottle as I ignite it. So once I'm done, I'll start the recording again. Alright, so hopefully I've got enough oxygen and trimethyl borate vapor in there. So I'm just going to ignite a piece of cotton. Lower it in, hopefully getting a nice green flame out the top. Whoa! That was cool! Super cool. <laughs> that was super cool. <laughs>
Yeah, I spent a pretty long time shaking that one, so I got quite a bit of vapor in there. But um, if you shake it for a shorter time, you'll have less vapor in there. It'll be a bit slower. So that was pretty cool, wasn't it? So I just prepared another solution. I'm going to do it again. Um, it turned out pretty good, but it burned a bit faster than I would have liked, I think, because I got a little bit too much vapor in there. I spent a little bit too long shaking it. So it burned a bit faster than usual. So this time I'll um, I'll make sure there's a little bit less vapor in the uh, bottle so that way you can watch the flame slowly move through the bottle. So before I do it again, here's the exact chemical reaction taking place when I light the uh, bottle. The trimethyl borate uh, reacts with oxygen to produce boron oxide, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. So, to the backyard. Alright, so this time I should have a bit less vapor in there. So let's light it again. Now that is cool. It oscillates a bit since the, uh, the pressure forces all of the uh, gases out of the bottle. And then once it cools, low pressure is created within the bottle and the oxygen rushes in again and causes the remaining vapor to burn. That's why it oscillates a bit if you don't add quite so much vapor. Alright, so that was pretty cool. That's hands down one of my favorite experiments I've done so far. So I highly recommend this one for uh, classroom demonstrations. The, um, the substances you're dealing with aren't terribly toxic, as long as you don't stick your nose in the bottle and breathe it in. Um, it's got that good balance of being dangerous enough to be interesting, you're dealing with green flames, but not dangerous enough that you'd be a bit nervous uh, working with it around a room full of kids. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video.